Hello, I'm Paul Graham. And I'm Levi Weaver. We will be talking to you today about many aspects of parasitic plants. We will cover things such as what a parasitic plant is, how they survive, discuss benefits and disadvantages of parasitic plants. The first subject we will talk about is what a parasitic plant is. A parasitic plant is a plant that derives some or all of its nutrients from another living organism. This means that parasitic plants do not use photosynthesis to produce food like all other plants. They use a specialized root form called a hosterium to leach nutrients from the roots of a host plant. There are over 4,100 species of parasitic plants in over 19 different families. Parasitic plants are found throughout the world and have evolved to be able to handle a wide variety of climates and habitats. They are capable of doing this because unlike other plants, they are not reliant on climate controlled variables such as soil condition and weather since their, their source of nutrients are other plants that have acclimatized to these conditions already. Our first example of a parasitic plant is mistletoe. This plant is considered a hemiparasite due to the fact that it gains nutrients from a host but is also capable of photosynthesis. Mistletoe grows among branches of shrubs and trees. Currently mistletoe has become a large problem for scotch pines in Scotland where a lack of cold winters, something that is essential for keeping mistletoe growth in check, has allowed mistletoe to kill whole stands of the native trees. A second example of a parasitic plant is the corpse flower. This plant can be found in the Amazon rainforest. It can grow up to one meter in diameter, making it the world's largest flower. The reason it is able to do this is because it leaches nutrients and water from the root system of large trees. This allows the plant to have all the water and nutrients it could ever need to grow such a large flower. The corpse flower is extremely unique because it is also a carnivorous plant and gives off an odor of rotting meat. A third example of a unique parasitic plant is the bird's nest orchid. What makes this plant so unique is that it lives underground where it feeds off of a fungus that is itself a parasite and is only found on the roots of beech trees. The orchid spending almost its entire life underground does not photosynthesize, and the only time you see it above ground is when it produces a long stem with yellow flowers that will appear during the summer. Although parasitic plants may seem like they would only be a problem, they do have many benefits. One benefit is that it encourages the suppression of grasses, making it easier for herbaceous flowers to grow in soils. They also are fantastic at improving the nutrient cycle in soils. They do this when they suppress large groups of grasses that would be using large amounts of the essential nutrients in the soil. Nutrients are also added from the breakdown of dead growth from plants that were already killed off by a parasitic plant. The disadvantages of parasitic plants are rather obvious. The potential to have plants take over one's flower beds, gardens, or pastures is not exactly desirable. For some plants, the ability to take over an area and destroy all other plants can happen fairly quickly, and unfortunately, once it has a foothold, it can be almost impossible to get rid of the invaders. An additional example of a parasitic plant is yellow rattle. This is a very destructive plant that has been known to wipe out large areas of grassland. It does this by sending out historiums and leaching the nutrients from the grass. It is also a poisonous plant and can be harmful to livestock and other grazing animals. The toxins that make it poisonous have also been able to make it into foods like cereal because it was growing on the wheat from which the cereal was made. Thank you.
A final and very interesting example of hemiparasitism is the Western Australia Christmas tree. It is named this because of the brilliant golden flowers that only appear on the tree around Christmas time. As a hemiparasitic plant, it has retained the ability to photosynthesize, but requires a host plant for propagation. It is this unique quality that allows these trees to reach up to 10 meters in height, making one of the larger specimens of parasitic plants. Although it is very difficult to grow these plants outside of their natural conditions, some has found that it is the most easiest to attach it to the roots of grasses. In conclusion, we have found parasitic plants to be a unique and diverse group within the plant kingdom. They have developed a specialized form of propagation and nutrient retrieval system. This system has allowed them to find a niche within most, if not all, forms of habitat on Earth and allows them to be flexible with any changes that may occur to the respective habitats. It is this ability to adapt which has not only allowed such a wide variety of parasitic plants to appear throughout the plant kingdom, but is also why we believe they will continue to be successful in these times of climactic change.